Nobuhiko Obayashi is not necessarily a common name in the West, as far as Japanese filmmakers go at least. When Obayashi passed away in 2020, he left behind a lengthy career with a multitude of diverse films under his belt. Only one of these films, however, House, has gained major traction this side of the Pacific, and it has only achieved this status within the last decade, more than 30 years after its initial release. At home, Obayashi was celebrated for his achievements and storied career. Before Obayashi even entered the mainstream filmmaking arena, he was already known in Japan for his work in advertising. Hailing from a line of doctors, Obayashi was born on January 9, 1938. His father was drafted into World War II, leaving Obayashi to be raised by his grandparents, a period during which he became interested more in artistic pursuits than in medicine. At 17, Obayashi was sent to enter medical school by his father, and instead received a liberal arts degree, at which point he began producing experimental films. Along the line, these experimental films helped him transition into television advertising, which eventually helped him transition into feature filmmaking. Bear these two things in mind, the advertisements and the experimental films, as we delve into Obayashi's most popular film internationally, House, since both of these elements are extremely important. The script for House was written by Chiko Katsura, who is also known almost exclusively outside of Japan for House. A Waseda University graduate born in 1929, Katsura is an accomplished author, playwright, and screenwriter, though virtually none of his work has made it into print in English. He stopped writing for the screen in 1997 and has since almost exclusively written books. For Obayashi, Katsura penned a screenplay concerning a group of young women who are planning a trip out of town for their school vacation. They all made up and traveled to the house of the lead girl, Gorgeous. Really, it's her aunt's house. Almost immediately upon arriving, Gorgeous, Kung Fu, Prof, Fantasy, Mac, Sweet, and Melody get sucked into a vortex of witchcraft and supernatural occurrences. One of their teachers plans to come meet them after having to cancel his travel plans with the girls last minute, but for the most part the seven are left to their own devices in Auntie's sprawling, bizarre mansion. Each of the young women embodies a different stereotype or aspect of young femininity. Mac is a glutton, perhaps being named after McDonald's. Kung Fu, well, knows Kung Fu. Melody plays music. Gorgeous is noted for her attractiveness. Prof is the nerdy one of the bunch. Fantasy has her head perpetually in the clouds. And Sweet is known for being sweet. The film puts on full display the breadth of Obayashi's technical and experimental skills, which he had gathered up to this point. From jaw-dropping practical effects, to technicolor painted backgrounds, to an auto-tuned cat ballad, to a two-decade early Super Mario 64 reference to stop-motion madness. House has a little bit of everything, to be frank. At less than an hour and a half, it's no wonder that this manic masterpiece was adopted readily by the internet once its users discovered the film back in 2011, at which point the Criterion Collection released House in America. And while House is certainly notable and respectable due to these elements, there's a bit more to uncover underneath the visuals and filmmaking techniques of Obayashi's best-loved film. House certainly is bizarre, and it's told in a bizarre manner. It's not that the narrative is non-linear or confused. It's the blending of styles throughout, the breakneck pace at which all dialogue and musical cues are delivered. This might appear similar to Takashi Miike's Visitor Q, another strange horror film that is specifically designed to never let the audience feel comfortable. Visitor Q effectively fills in all empty time with constant noise and awkward scenarios, making it so that the entire viewing experience is more unsettling than horrific, but damn if it isn't effective. The primary difference here is that House was Obayashi's first proper film, where Visitor Q was roughly Miike's 9,000th, and as you'll recall, Obayashi's background was an advertising and experimental film. House is extremely short, but it runs you ragged, feeling more like an ADHD simulation than a comedy horror film. This isn't to say it's inherently bad, mind you, just that your mind will constantly be fluctuating between what and okay then, throughout the entire thing, with effective fever dream cinematography being lent by Yoshitaka Sakamoto. Prior to working on House, most of Obayashi's domestically shot commercials were done at Toho's studios, giving him an in with the hierarchy there. 
This is significant, as you might notice that, unlike a lot of the directors from decades past that we've covered up to this point, Obayashi did not start out as an assistant director, then work his way up in Toho's ranks. Instead, he was given a directorial position through a horizontal transfer. He had not gone to school for film, nor had he worked directly for Toho prior to House. It's important to note that becoming a commercial director came with its own set of risks and rewards for Obayashi, as he says that at the time, commercials were not in any way considered an artistic medium, merely a means to an end. Obayashi explains that when he and many other directors making experimental short films were approached to change the way television advertising was done, he was the only one to answer the call. In 1975, despite not being a Toho employee, Nobuhiko Obayashi was asked by the studio to produce a film similar to the then-successful Jaws. He collaborated with his young daughter to work out a plot, as Obayashi stated that, quote, children can come up with things that can't be explained." End quote. A number of scenes in the film draw directly from these conversations with his daughter, in order to create a truly unique horror experience. The plot was then given to Chiko Katsura for expansion. The film stalled in production for two years, when no directors at Toho wanted to work on it. Obayashi himself asked to take it on, but was denied until 1977, due to not technically being an employee of the studio. The fervor over getting the job got so intense that Obayashi called upon his advertising background to facilitate ads, a soundtrack by then popular rock band Go Diego, which would be used in the film, a novelization, a manga adaptation, and a radio drama, all before shooting had even begun on the film itself. The radio drama in particular was so successful that Toho allowed Obayashi to finally assume the director's position. This was a more or less unprecedented action which marked a change in the tides of the studio system. Toho had reportedly lost a good bit of money on commercial failures from what they said were comprehensible films, and were ready to gamble on something incomprehensible, just like House. Thankfully, it didn't take long to kick the production into gear, as Obayashi had already cast the picture. The cast of the film was played mostly by young women Obayashi had encountered in the two-year production stall, while he was still working on commercials. He cast the main characters this way, meaning that most of them were unknown as actors outside of these ads, as were the remaining roles which went to friends of Obayashi plus family of the cast and crew. The film was finally released on July 20th, 1977, where it became a hit with young people, winning Obayashi the blue ribbon for Best New Director in 1978. The film would eventually tour America theatrically in 2010, where it was well received, especially compared to its initial Japanese reviews in 1977. Upon release, House received commercial success, especially with younger audiences, but it was critically panned. Similar to many cult films like this, it was not until more recent re-examination that the film has come to be revered critically. If anything can be said was done 100% right, knocked it out of the park, no issues here about House, it's the visual effects. It's honestly hard to believe that this film was shot and edited in the 1970s when you look at how bewildering some of the scenes are. It seems only appropriate in a film with such a strange sense of emotion and narrative that the visuals are just as varied. Throughout the film, you've got hand-drawn animations that fill the entire frame, animations superimposed on live action shots, elaborate painted backdrops reminiscent of an old studio picture, dismembered body parts at the wazoo, both in varying positions and sizes. If House should be remembered for nothing else, it should be remembered fondly for its visuals. Consider what else was out of the time. Sure, Star Wars came out the same year, and set the standard for special effects super high, but Star Wars sought realism to an extent. It wanted you to emotionally engage with the situations it presented on a natural level. Thus, it used familiar, realistic-looking effects to tell a story in a believable way. By comparison, House feels like they threw caution to the wind and literally threw all of their ideas at a wall until things began to stick. It just kind of happened that everything stuck, which is in no way a bad thing. But now that we've experienced the anarchy and heard the background of House, for the love of Chester, what does it all mean? Well, this might surprise you, but the bit with the flashback to Auntie's life growing up was actually extremely important. 
Obayashi, who was born in Hiroshima and lived through World War II, reportedly lost all childhood friends during the atomic bombing of his hometown, a development which led to the inclusion of the plot thread involving Auntie waiting around for her fiancé to come home from war. The generation gap between Obayashi's peers, who lived through the war, and the younger people, who were born after its conclusion, is present here. Auntie is embittered by the fact that the girls don't have to sustain the seemingly senseless attacks and losses that she did, and are instead so happy-go-lucky. Obayashi even commented in a 2014 interview that House was, in a way, a method of explaining the horrors of World War II to a generation who had not lived through it. He said, quote, House expressed the atomic bomb for children using extremely childish imagery that they can understand. End quote. Pertinent to note here is the comedic tone of the film as a whole. If you compare House with other films relating to World War II, two things stand out. One being the comparatively comedic tone of the project, and the other being the abstraction with which House discusses the atomic bomb. We've discussed multiple times the effects of the economic miracle that followed Reconstruction and World War II, but through the films to be produced during these decades, we can track the sentiment of the population through the miracle. You have films like Love Letter from the 1950s, from when American forces had just stopped occupying the country, and before Japan truly recovered economically. These types of films discussed heavy social issues and the implications thereof. Later, you have films like Parasite Eve or Battle Royale in the 90s and 2000s, which asked bleak philosophical questions in another time of economic strife. But in between, you can track a tonal shift in Youth at the Beast with its dark subject matter, yet tone of comedy as the country moved into the economic miracle. Then with House, which is absolutely off the rails fun and nonsensical, despite, again, having a dark subject. House was released just before the 1980s, which were ostensibly the height of the economic miracle, and with the coming of age of a whole generation who were born after the war ended. We think it's important to note how you can see this in the type of comedy displayed, where comedies from eras of struggle are usually somewhat dark and arguably bleak or pragmatic. Comedies that arise from eras of nonchalance and success can come off like House, completely insane from their own giddiness, carefree even. You might remember back when we discussed Sweet Home, how we examined the different tropes in Japanese and American ghost stories how both sides were present in that film. Well, there's something markedly Western about House as well, and it's certainly something we weren't expecting to find here, that being the Seven Deadly Sins. Though of course this is not the end-all be-all method of interpreting this film. In this interpretation, Mac represents gluttony, as she is always eating or hungry. Gorgeous represents pride, as her ultimate downfall is a result of interfacing with her own reflection and she wants nothing more than to have her friends and teacher all come with her. Sweet represents lust, as her relationships with boys are a common topic of conversation. Kung Fu would be wrath, as she is often relied upon for her physical abilities, and her being quick to fight ultimately leads to her death. Melody, while not a complete fit, is in this interpretation envy, as her wanting to do nothing more than play someone else's piano gets her killed. Prof, meanwhile, represents sloth, she demonstrates time and again her intelligence and academic prowess, but does little in the way of practically protecting herself or the others. Yes, she does read the diary and gives instructions on how to defeat Auntie, but this could almost be seen as too little too late, given how she perishes not soon after. And lastly, fantasy would be greed. She's the first to suggest that anything strange is afoot in the house, claims which the others easily brush off. Even if she does not embody greed herself, the other's view of her could suggest the relationship. Again, this isn't a foolproof analysis in terms of the seven deadly sins, but we felt like there were too many coincidences to write them off entirely. That being said, what other meanings behind House have you picked up on beyond the general subtext about World War II and the atomic bomb? This film is sure to inspire a great deal of conversation concerning intent, themes, and meanings. For that reason, we would love to hear your own thoughts on the film in the comments below.